Today we're going to be talking about this great game called Time's Up. It's put out by r and Games Incorporated. It's a party game. It plays four players and up. And it's a team game. So, um, and you can have, they suggest two people on a team, but you can play with more people on the team, especially if you have younger people, if you've got teenagers or younger wanting to play. Um, pair older people up with younger people. Don't put all the older people on a team and all the younger people on a team because that doesn't work well with this game. You want the olders and the youngers mixed in on the same teams. Um, plays about an hour and a half, two hours. But the great game is this is very flexible. If you want a longer game, you put in more cards. If you want a, f a shorter game, you put in fewer cards. Um, what you do is you deal out 40 cards. You kind of mix the cards up deal out 40 cards between all the players and then two cards per player more and then you let every player discard two cards. So they look through their cards and what's on these cards is there's people's names or characters names. Like I'm looking at and there's a blue side and a yellow side. There's over 400 cards in the base game and the blue and the yellow uh, one of them's not necessarily any harder than the other one but I'm looking at it. Here's Charles Darwin, Tom Hanks, Yoko Ono, Stephen King, Sinbad, Louis L'Amour, or Louis L'Amour, Aunt Jemima, Arnold Palmer, Julius Caesar. So all kinds of people. People in entertainment, people in history, uh, authors, actors. Um, so you, you deal out the 40, you let them discard two. If you want to make it a little bit easier, you deal out more cards and let them discard more. That way when they're looking through their hand and deciding what to discard, they can find people that they know and discard the people they don't know. Okay, and then what happens is once everybody's done their discard, those discards go out of the game. You keep what's left and you make a pile. So everybody throws their cards in, makes a pile, and then that's the pile you play from. And there's three rounds in this game. The first round, um, pretend like I am giving the clue and so I'm giving the clue to my teammate or teammates and I want them to give me the names on the cards. So they have to say the names on the cards. So uh, I flip up one that says Charles Darwin on it. So I try to give them clues that talk about evolution or something. Or I could say, well, his first name is the same name as a cartoon character, something brown. Or he, he's in a comic strip, you know. I come up with ways of getting them to say, okay, that's Charles. Charles what? And, and uh, so in the first round, you can say anything and you can make actions, you can make noises, whatever. The only limitations are don't say... Uh, it starts with the third letter of the alphabet. Um, it rhymes with this, that kind of stuff. You cannot pass in the first round. So you're stuck giving this away, g giving clues on this card until you get it. And somebody, as soon as you flip the timer, you get to start. So if somebody says Charles Darwin, you go to the next one. And I'm working on Tom Hanks, and so I try to maybe give them clues. He was in this movie, he was in some other movie. And then I, oh, they got that one, so let's go to the next one. Okay, this guy was, this, this lady was, uh, you know, uh, John Lennon's wife or girlfriend. Um, and then until the time's up, once time's up, then the deck gets passed to the next team. And then they go through the same cards, the same process. And you go and you go and you go until this, this stack is gone. And then once the stack's gone, Everybody, you get a, a score sheet, and you total up how many cards each, each team has. You uh, then write that down. And then what happens is, on the second round, you use the same exact cards, the same names you picked before, so you're going through the same names over again. But in the second round, you can pass this time. So if you flip one up, and you're like, wow, that's too hard, or I don't know who it is, then you can go to the next one, you can go to the next one and try to get one that you can give clues on that you think you can get. The great thing is you look at this book and this book is falling apart. We've played this game a ton. 
Uh, it's got every name that's in these cards in here. So you can look it up and it gives you a little synopsis on that person or that character. So the second round you can pass, but the limitation is you can only do one word. So you can only give one word. And so if I flip that up and I had Charles Darwin, I'd say evolution. And if they couldn't get it from that, I can't give them a different word. I can't say something different. Or I'd say Lenin. Hopefully they'd think of John Lennon instead of Lenin the Russian. Or I'd come up with some name for a movie that has one word in it for Tom Hanks or something or Stephen King. And if they give the wrong answer in the second round, that's the only, th you can only take one answer in the second round. In the first round, they could keep guessing and keep guessing. Second round, one answer. If it's the wrong answer, or if they say the right first name, the wrong last name, or the right last day, right first, whatever, then <clears throat> it's wrong. So they have to go, go to the next card. So then it progresses the same way in the second round. And then once the deck's gone, you go to the third round. Now the third round, you can still pass, and you still can only take one answer. So especially in bigger team games, like if you're playing four people on a team or something, you have to be very careful because you can only take one answer for the team. Um, but you can't say anything in the third round. You can only make sounds, uh, do actions, things like that. So you go through the third round and you think might think the third round is impossible, but the first two rounds prepare you for the third round because you've heard these names at least twice and you've seen them come around and you've given clues on them. So you're gonna try, you're gonna kind of remember, maybe, maybe uh, you see Stephen King in here and you can't, you're, you don't, you're limited on, uh, you can't say anything in the third round, but you might put a, you know, try to come up with a crown on your head for a king or something like that to try to get people to think, oh, okay, he's talking about Stephen King. Um, and then once you've gone through the third round, then you score up the total for all three rounds of cards that your team has got, and then you see who's the winner by who had the most cards throughout the whole game. So once again, it's a great, uh, party game, you, um, it's got all kinds of people in it, and it's very fun. So hope you uh, get this game and enjoy it.